position in the league and would soon win a record-breaking 18th title. But now they were due to play Crystal Palace in the FA Cup semi-final and appeared on for a league and cup double. Palace had been promoted the previous season under the management of Steve Koppel and was spearheaded by their super strikers who conveniently rhyming bright and ripe. There were only two small problems for Palace. First, one of those super strikers, Ian Wright, was injured. And second, when they'd last met, Liverpool had won 9-0. Beardsley, Peter Beardsley, oh, he deserved that. <laughs> Liverpool getting knocked out of the cup by Palace was about as likely as Mike Tyson being knocked out by a total no-hoper. Six or seven months after the 9 0 crashing, we were at Villa Park. We've got these elite gentlemen players from Anfield, footballing royalty. And then we've got a group of misfits from South London. If I'd have been a pundit, I'd have turned around and said, you know what, it's got to be Liverpool for me. You know, I can't see them. Look at the ability to go to the team and back to front. You know, they've got to win. Even the wildest optimist, the Palace fan, I hope to lose 3 0 and come out of it with some. Credibility. Not even in my wildest dreams could I see Palace winning. You didn't even think about winning. Palace were about to be slaughtered on the pitch, but off it, their proud fans were determined to make an impression. Proud fans like Steve. The idea just spun his mind. I don't know why, I don't know how. They just, I said, that's it, we're getting a balloon. Steve was keen to make a dramatic gesture to show what the club meant to him. So obviously, he went out and spent an inordinate amount of money on balloons. I ended up getting three fans. I had 1,500 red, 1,500 blue. It cost me near on a month's wages. I was just giving handfuls to everyone. You could hear them going up, people blowing them up. To this day, Steve's balloons are one of the defining images of the match for Palace fans. The balloons started coming towards the pitch. And it was mental. You know, I got goosebumps now. Again, thinking of it, because it's such a big day for us. Steve had done it. He'd shown the world that Palace fans were the sort of folks who weren't afraid to spend a month's wages on balloons. I'm proud of it. I still am to this day, even though I'm 43. <laughs> Nobody knows to what degree the balloons unsettled the mighty Liverpool, but by half time, they were only 1 0 ahead. Courtesy of an Ian Rush goal. To come off the park at half time, only 1 0 down was fantastic, you know. We've, we've won our match. A couple just said, you know, listen, they're Liverpool. They've got to keep playing the same way. They won't sit back. They'll come at us. And when they do, we can count and get them. So the plan was simple. Don't panic and definitely don't go on long, pointless, lazy runs that leave you out of position. And that means you, John Pemberton. I'm going down the stairs after half-time to start the second half. And Pemberton has gone on a run straight down the right wing, all the way down and crossed. It was one all before I got back to my seat, which is just brilliant. Paul Coppel says afterwards that he saw Pemberton hairy down the line and really crossed him, because the last thing he said was, don't go on one of your stupid runs. And Pembo just went, well, what did he say? Go on a stupid run with it? I can't even say don't or do. Oh, well, I'm halfway through it now, I might as well carry on. And the relief from that to scoring a goal was just brilliant. Palace had scored a brilliant, scrappy goal and were level, but it was about to get even better for the Palace faithful. <laughs> Palace were on their way to Wembley, but with just eight minutes left, Liverpool forced their way back into the game. Liverpool were level, and just two minutes later it got even worse when John Pemberton clumsily brought down Steve Staunton inside the box. We went ahead and think, OK, they've had the lead once in the game, you know, they've had their fun, we'll, we'll, we'll take over from here. And it's just... You know, thought we've come so close, and here we are. Look at that, we're going to go out now. 
it wasn't long to go, and I just remember preparing myself for what I was going to say to Pembo when we got inside that dressing room. Well, you could say, nice job, Pembo. You've let us all down, and you've ruined our season. But surprisingly, Palace weren't done, and they piled forward. You'd have to be in a situation like that to know what it's like to like, live that moment where, you know, the dream's still alive. After some stirring words from Steve Koppel, the melee continued. It's just the thing that Koppel's just saying to us, if you really want it now, it's yours. You know, go and take it. They're shot. Look at them. You know, they aren't as fit as you, like you lot are fit. Really go and do it. Take it. You might, you might get one chance like this in your career. Then, four minutes into the second period of extra time, Palace won a corner. Sitting there, you know, nails bitten down to the quick. You know, sitting on your hands and just... And then they scored. Alan Pardew, babe. Put that in your pipe. Pardew reacted as he added it in and just couldn't believe it. By the time the fourth goal went in that one, you just, you just barely had the energy to, to stand on your tiptoes. I bought Alan Pardew for seven and a half thousand and I got down to the pitch and he ran the length of the pitch and just pointed at me and said, best seven and a half thousand you ever spent, he said to me. <laughs> Palace had scored four gloriously scrappy goals to see off the league champions and put themselves a place in the FA Cup final. I can remember a split second, just that moment, the, the explosion of joy. And it's like all the years of sport in the club worth it just for that moment. I got on the pitch for the final whistle. It was just mental. I can't, I can't describe it other than it was Unbelievable. The sheer just emotion that it was probably the best day of my career. As if that wasn't exciting enough, Palace went on to draw 3-3 with Manchester United in the final. And eventually lost the replay by a single goal that legend has it saved Alex's <laughs> job.